Nausea and vomiting are super common symptoms, but occasionally it can be caused by a physical blockage of the gut, the intestine, which prevents food or liquid from passing through. And when there's no place for it to go, it builds up and comes right back up and out. So in today's video, yes, I'm gonna mention some of the more common causes, but I really wanna get into five of the less commonly known causes of intestinal obstruction. And I promise you, the further along we go, it's gonna get progressively stranger and stranger. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Austin Chang. I'm a gastroenterologist, which makes me a doctor of digestive diseases. I subspecialize in advanced endoscopy or complex procedures. So essentially, I'm a human plumber. Whenever there's a blockage of the gut, it's my job to go in, figure out what's causing it, and potentially open it up and fix it. You might recognize me from my recent collab with Dr. Mike, where we react to Markiplier's health emergency. Based on the clips that we were reacting to, we kind of figured out that there was some sort of intestinal blockage of some sort. Now, based on those clips, we didn't know exactly what was going on with Markiplier, but we did guess some of the more common causes of intestinal blockage, like adhesions, which is scar tissue in the belly that can happen after people have undergone abdominal surgery. Another cause we brought up is ileus, which is a slow-moving intestine. There's not a physical blockage, but the intestine can become slow and sluggish, and it can be due to medications or severe illness, and it just takes some time for it to wake back up. Some of the other common causes include hernias, where loops of bowel can get caught between weak parts of the muscle, inflammatory diseases like Crohn's disease, where the wall of the gut becomes inflamed and it affects its ability to move, or small bowel tumors like lymphomas. When they get large enough, it can block off flow in the intestine as well. But let's get into some of the less common causes. The first thing I'm gonna mention is infections. And I'm not talking about the run-of-the-mill viral gastroenteritis, but rather like parasites. Sometimes there can be worms that grow in the intestine, and we might not see this as much in more developed countries like the United States, but worms can grow and become a tangled mess and block off the intestine. Like a lot of the other causes that I'm gonna mention, when it gets severe enough, it might actually require surgery to remove whatever is causing that blockage. In most cases, if there is a parasitic infection, medical treatment might be enough to just clear out the infection without having to remove anything surgically. Now, not all foreign objects are alive. That brings me to number two, which are foreign objects. I feel like we see this more often in children or people with mental health illness, but essentially like in kids, for instance, they can inadvertently swallow toys. And if it's small enough, it can pass through the stomach, but it's too big to actually pass through the intestine, so it gets caught there. Another interesting scenario is when people are trying to smuggle certain, say, controlled substances. As you can imagine, trying to remove these with a procedure like going in through the mouth and trying to fetch it out isn't always a good idea because if you open a packet up, for instance, it may actually lead to an overdose and be pretty dangerous. And there's a whole set of criteria as to whether or not certain things have to be removed, if they're sharp, if they're small. Small coins, for instance, less than the size of a quarter should be able to pass through your entire gut without getting caught up anywhere. Unless that is you have some condition like inflammatory bowel disease where it could potentially get caught up somewhere. Now, if you've watched up until this point, let me know in the comment section below what's the strangest thing that you've heard get caught in an intestine. And if you like what you're watching so far, please give this video a thumbs up. It would really help me out. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button below. Now, number three is a situation where the human anatomy can work against itself. One of these examples is called SMA syndrome. SMA stands for superior mesenteric artery, which is one of the main blood vessels that supplies the blood flow to the gut. Now, usually this blood vessel sits on this fat pad, but with dramatic weight loss, this fat pad can actually shrink down and cause the vessel to collapse onto the intestine and cause a blockage. Interestingly, one of the ways to fix this situation is, if possible, helping the patient regain weight to build up this fat pad again so the blood vessel can lift off the intestine. Now, sometimes our bodies sabotages ourselves not with anatomy, but with things that our body creates. So the fourth thing I'm gonna mention, one of these examples are gallstones. The gallbladder is something that you may have heard of, which is a sac that's filled with bile, and every time we eat, it squirts a little bit of bile out into our intestine to help digest our food. The problem is that stones can actually form in this sac. On rare occasion, they can actually erode out of the wall of the gallstone into the small intestine and cause a blockage there. This condition is called Bouveret syndrome. It's pretty rare, but I've already seen it a couple times in my career thus far. And how we go about fixing this is that we go in through the mouth using a scope down to where the stone is and trying to break it up so that it can open the gut back up. We do this using a lot of different tools, whether it's wire baskets or other shock waves to break up the stone. But in any case, the goal is to destroy the stone so that things can move freely again. 
And I think I saved the best for last, which is a fruit that can cause a blockage in the intestine. Now, technically, a lot of different fruits can potentially cause this problem, and even some other indigestible material. What I'm talking about are bezoars. Bezoars are these collections that can form in the stomach or the small intestine and cause blockage, and they can be formed by certain things like super high fiber foods or even hair. So one of these super high fiber fruits is called a persimmon. Now, I don't know if any of you have had a persimmon before. They're pretty good, actually, but it's not super common in the United States. But in other parts of the world, when they're in season, you can bet that there are multiple cases that can happen each year where people develop these balls of fiber that essentially block off the gut. And in general, it's always a good idea to balance out fiber with fluid because otherwise things can just get bulked up and become this fibery mess. Now I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button below and turning on your notifications bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. If you want to follow me on any other social media platform, my handle is AustinChangMD. I will leave all the links in the description box below. From now on, I'm hoping to upload every Sunday, but in the meantime, let me know in the comment section below what kinds of videos you'd like to see from me. But until then, I hope you stay warm, stay healthy, have a happy holiday, and I will see you next time. Bye!